Hello guys and girls, Screezilla here and I hope you're all well and well to see A Lorraine. Now this video is going to be about, a little bit about the vehicle, but mainly about this section here. The road tyres. Why does a tank have rubber tyres? Now this is something that's actually quite common on a fair few of the uh, Lorraines. So I think the Lorraine 40T also has a similar setup. Yep. Same sort of chassis, um, and quite a few French tanks have it. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. I'm just trying to think of others that do have it. I think don't think the super heavies have it. I might be wrong. No, the super heavies don't have it. Um, but what I wanted to talk about was also the super heavies with this section here. Now this little outside edge of these wheels is actually rubber. Yes, surprising, isn't it? Um, the reason for that, and the reason they have rubber coating on the wheels, and you'll notice this with pretty much all tanks, um, it's very rare that they don't have the rubber covering on the wheels. Even the German tanks tend to have it on there. And it's a very fine layer of rubber around the, the, um, the road wheels. So you can just see here in here with the Panther. You know, it's just got that very fine rubber ring around it. All of, t pretty much all modern tanks sort of have a system like that. But why? Well, two reasons. The first reason is metal on metal wears very fast. So, when you're scraping two bits of metal together, if there's no lubrication, what happens is the metal grinds away. And you have to replace it more often. Rubber is a lot cheaper than metal and a lot easier to replace. So, a rubber covering, that will wear out after say 10,000 miles. I think it's a lot less than, I think it's every 100, um, sorry, every 1,000 to 5,000 miles, something like that. It, it's, it's a relatively common thing that has to be replaced. But that has to be replaced and you know it's a lengthy process you have to take the tracks off put this new rubbering on and then put it back on but it stops the metal wearing away so you don't have to constantly replace the metal section for tires well that's even easier because with these you don't have to take the tracks off to replace this section you can just change it like a normal wheel and the great thing about a tank is well it's a tank it doesn't really need to be jacked up much so what you can do is just deflate the tire take it off put the new one on and then reinflate it on the tank a bit of a, a sort of um, on the job method but usually this would all be replaced at the same time but the thing with a rubber wheel and a pneumatic rubber wheel like these like a road tire um, so you know like a normal road going tire is the fact that it also gives suspension because this section here is just air so it gives you a much softer drive because this is a section that's going to be in contact with the ground so let's just take it for a test drive and show you so that's the answer to the question it just helps the longevity of the road wheels but these sort of um, inflated tires and pneumatic tires just help with the suspension you get much less bounce now you still get a bit of wobble of course it's not perfect and you still have normal suspension but it just gives a little bit extra suspension over rough terrain so it just makes it a little bit more comfortable in the tank and just makes things a little bit less um, less costly so it really helps in that respect one of the downsides of course is rubber tires can be punctured um, these were generally a much harder rubber, a much tougher rubber. They weren't sort of designed for road use, of course. Um, so they, they tended to have a little bit of thicker rubber section and, you know, they weren't always filled with air. Sometimes um, liquid, liquids were used, things like that, uh, in some examples of history. Okay, so that answers that question. Now, let's talk about the Lorraine CA tank destroyer. How is it? Well, let's just go head on with this Tiger 2 here. And this is what you're going to be facing. 
First things, you need to be stationary in this tank. You can't zip around the battlefield. You can get to a good spot, but that's all. Secondly, you have got good penetration, but you're going to find your shot bounces an awful lot. And when it does penetrate, it doesn't cause a huge amount of damage. Um, let's just fire into the turret here. We should hopefully kill it. But no, it doesn't. The 90mm gun is relatively good, but the spooling damage, the, the actual damage on this thing is just atrocious. You know, we've got three good penetrations there on the Tiger 2 and still not dead and you know this is the thing with this tank is you will be really struggling with it um, you'll be able to penetrate lots of things but you won't do much damage overall the round is a good velocity um, so I'll just reload here doopy 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 doo so, you know, aiming's pretty easy with it, but the fragmentation is horrible, even with a Panzer IV C there. We didn't get a one-hit kill. Yes, we hit it in the turret, but this is the problem that I've been having. And, yeah, it's terrible. That's all I've got to say about it. It is absolutely woeful. Um, one good part of it is it is very low profile. Um, so... I, I would show you some gameplay footage, but every gameplay footage I've got is either me bouncing shots off things, things ricocheting, or things penetrating and doing absolutely nothing to a, to a tank. So as you can see here, we're about the same height as the Tiger II's hull. Um, so we're relatively low profile, so that does mean we can sneak around a bit better. Um, now this is arcade, of course, but even in realistic mode, you know, when you're turning this vehicle, it just overturns, it just does not drive very well at all. The gun handling is okay, as I said, the gun is, you know, it's got a good punch to it, but the fragmentation just does not work, and you're just going to struggle to kill things, unless you get a lucky ammo rack. Um, the only way to kill things is going for the ammo, and even then I've found sometimes I've hit the ammunition and it's not gone off, you know, it's just, it's very frustrating. Let's just head back to the hangar and have a look at the armour. Now the armour on this thing, you sort of look at it and you go, well, actually that could possibly hold up, but no, it doesn't at all. Um, the armor is absolutely useless. You will get penetrated through here, through here, through here, through here, through here, through here, through here constantly, and then planes will come in, and you will get penetrated through here, through here, through here, through here, through here. You're kind of getting the point, aren't you? Um, your engine is constantly gone on this thing. You, I, I, I don't think I've played a game with the engine intact. Um, and of course, one penetration from the front always takes out the gun barrel. Um, I've not had a single game with this gun barrel intact. And this cannon bridge is always taken out. So it's 100mm gun, sorry, not 90mm. Um, this always gets taken out. And usually you get hit in about this you get hit about here which will kill everybody in the tank instantly so yeah the Lorraine CA is terrible wish I could say more about it really I really wish I could say it was actually a good tank but it really is not very good the gun is okay but as I say the lack of an explosive filler kills it um, I honestly maybe think this should be 5.0, this should be 5.7, I think they're over tiered, they're just, it's, look, fighting tigers in this thing, I have been bouncing off the front of tigers even, um, I, I was shooting at the front of a tiger H1, and, um, not modifications, what am I doing, customization, that's what I want to do, um, so I shot the front of the tiger 
and it was about this angle. Shot it here, and it just bounced, just ricocheted. I don't know how that happens, but it just ricocheted. It's just really, really bouncy gun. Um, plus, as I said, the issue is, is when you're driving it, it's very, very... You can't shoot on the move because there's no stabilizer, of course. It's got an okay amount of depression, but not great. Um, all in all, though, it is terrible. Um, yeah, do not... If you get it, you're not going to have a fun time in it. You, you're going to struggle a lot. And, of course, every game you're up tier to 6.7, at least... Um, because of all the AMX 13s in the game at the moment. So, really, it's not good at all. It can do with being lowered in its BR a bit. As I say, it just feels too weak, in all honesty. Um, you'll be fighting a lot of the American heavy tanks. So, for instance, I was fighting, I think it was a T-32? Could have been a T-32, I think. and shot the front plate you're not going to, be able to penetrate really unless it's dead on um, I was shooting from above so I was shooting about this angle here shot in here didn't penetrate at all um, you know and, and that's the thing you just find this gun does not penetrate like you'd expect it to penetrate um, you know it, it just does nothing and it's very frustrating to play it just really does not perform how you would expect it um yeah that's about all I can say on the Lorraine CA with the CA Lorraine at the moment it's terrible yeah I wish I had better news for you guys um the Fosh I hope is better um but 7.3 the armor is very good on the Fosh so I'm hoping that really does help out but the trouble is, it has this sort of same gun bre gun system, and I'm just worried that this is just going to be a real big weak spot. I mean, it, it's 200 millimeters of armor, and you know, you'd think, well, that will be fine. But honestly, I just find things just go through here like, like it's um, a hot knife through butter. It just doesn't stop anything. So yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how the Fosh goes. Um, I'm hoping it is better than the Lorraine because at the moment the Lorraine is absolutely terrible. Um, so yeah, that that's the end of the uh, current French video for today. Uh, I hope you uh, didn't get too depressed from this video. Um, let me know what you think below, and I will catch you next time. This is Squeeze and Out. Bye bye.